What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, I know it, it's different, right? Gloves and a hat. Like, I came out here and spent three hours at this co part yard recording the first two videos of the week. And I didn't have a hat, I didn't have gloves. I don't even think I own any, to be honest with you. I just, I've never really used them. My fiance got a hold of me uh, right as I was finishing up with the last video and said she was bringing me some coffee or a uh, hot chocolate, I'm sorry. Not only did she bring me hot chocolate, she went out and bought me a, uh, a beanie to keep my ears warm and she bought me some gloves to keep my hands warm. That's a good woman right there. She went out of her way to go bring me something to help keep me warm. I truly appreciate it. So Jessica, I love you, sweetheart. Thank you so much for bringing me all this stuff. I should have been smart and done it to begin with, but it's always good to have a good woman that's looking out for you. So now I want to thank all of you for joining me. Thank you to Copart for allowing me to do this. Let's go over to the Moore sublot and let's look at some semis, some pull behind trailers, maybe a couple boats. And I think we may have three or four cars or five cars. One of them is pretty cool. It's a Cutlass 442. We're going to go out there and check those out right now. Now, one of the things I really, really love about the sublot, and, and honestly, I, the sublot used to be my least favorite place to go. But I'm going to tell you now, the sublot is now my most favoritest place to go. And the reason is simple. You can drive right up to the cars. When it's cold like this or it's wet and rainy out, uh, I'll tell you right now, there's one of the cars right there. Cutlass 442. Bingo. <laughs> Look at that. We drive... <laughs> I'm driving right up to that bad boy. We're going to check it out, and then we're going to drive over to the next car. Ooh, Mazda RX-8. Nice. So obviously, number one on my list is a 1973. This is a Cutlass 442, and she looks to be in very original condition. Man, I love these cars. I really do. I've always had a thing for the 442, man. Look at those little louvers in the hood right there. That's a factory stripe. Those are factory louvers. It's got some, some dings all down the side here. You probably can't see it in, in video, but it's got a lot of dings, door dings all over it. The top, I thought this was rust. This isn't rust. That's solid. This is in pretty good shape doors part way open boy <laughs> these doors okay it doesn't close that's why looks like somebody's done some rust repair here they should have taken this off because most likely you've got rust damage under here look at this guys man such a beautiful old car it really is well I guess opinions vary. You either, this is one of those cars that people either loved it or they just absolutely hated it. I, I love it. It looks like this back window has been leaking. You can see where it's damaged back there. The cardboard has been damaged there. It is a very original car. I, I, I really appreciate that about it. I truly do. Now, the interior leaves a lot to be desired. Now, for those of you that don't know, this has the swing away seats. See that? <laughs> this was an option. They either came with a bench seat or they came with these like captain's swing away chairs here. Yeah, you literally just whoop, swing around. <laughs> now, I don't expect that this is going to start, although this is a run and drive. Should have the old 350 rocket. I'm surprised it's actually cranking. I, I don't expect it to start with it being this cold out. Is that a Hearst shifter? Nah, I don't think it is. Maybe it is. <laughs> oh! She fired right up. Okay, she didn't fire right up. It, <laughs> it took a little coursing. But for a carbureted engine, she fired right up, trust me. It's below freezing out. It's about 25 degrees right now. Got your seat belt up there. A pillar trim is missing. Let's put it into gear. Yep. Yep. We got a tag here. 
Last tagged in 1986. Ugh. See what's going on under this hood if we can get it pop. How about this for the first car of the day, right? Oh man, I don't know if I can get my hand under there. It's bent. The, uh, the hood release is actually bent. Ugh, we got it though. That is the old 350 rocket, ladies and gentlemen. Great motor, really is. In its original glory, it's gold. In fact, I think it still has some gold that you can see, but not much. <laughs> Underneath all this grease, that is gold. A capacitive discharge ignition. <laughs> uh, still got the AC belt on it. That's pretty impressive. Frigid air. It's got a new fuel pump. So somebody obviously... Uh, and this is another one of those hoods. When you're closing, you just got to rock it back and forth. <laughs> one side to the other. Until eventually the hood, the, uh, the hood cooperates. There you go. That way you don't damage it. I, I really want this car. I really do. Like, more than any other car at the auction this week, this is the one I want. The problem is, I don't want to spend what they're asking for it. It just... I love how original it is. I really do. But not enough to spend... Uh, let's kick that carburetor down a little bit. Get that idle down. They want uh, $5,500 for this. Yeah, $5,500. And while I think it is a nice car, and it's in really good original condition, and it appears just about everything is working, except for the turn signals. Whew, sorry, I'm starting to shake. I'm getting cold again. Uh, I just don't see, I don't see $5,500 here. I don't. And apparently I'm not the only one because yeah, I don't know guys. Whew, sorry. I'm, I'm really shaking. I <laughs> Body by Fisher. You remember Fisher. Comment below. Tell me what you think. I think for $5,500 though, I'm going to have to pass. But I'm going to keep my eye on it because you never know. It might go down in price at some point. The seller may realize they're not going to get $55 out of it. Or they may hold on till tax time. And somebody will get that tax refund check. And this will be their next little dream car. Next on my list. I'm telling you, man. I love being able to just drive right up to them. An 07 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. It's a Schick Creek Survivor. I said Schick with a K. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. 172,000 miles on the clock. Of course, it's got the big old tires, big old wheels. Obviously, had a little bit of an accident in the front. What kind of wheels are these? Pro Comp Alloys. Hey, it's definitely something to go mud bogging in, right? Wrangler JK. Got that uh, big snorkel, man. <laughs> I love it. I do. I love it. One of these days, guys, I'm going to get me something like this. Man, I like this. I really do. I mean, to me, the front end is not that bad. It's a toy, guys. It's a toy. Repl replace this uh, piece right here and this piece right here that holds the hood down. You know, take off the Gorilla Tape. Okay, replace that. Put you another fender flare back on it and call it a day, man. This is a beautiful Jeep. I can't believe someone would file an insurance. It's a toy. It really is. It's a toy. I can't believe someone would file an insurance claim on something like that. Unless there was something wrong with it and they were looking to get rid of it anyway. <laughs> Let's fire this bad boy up. 
Is it just me or do the cars at this lot actually start more often than, than not? I love it. Got an airbag light on, a check engine light on, but she runs. I'm gonna hop in here real quick. Ooh, ow, the dang door just closed on me. Woo. Whew, it's chilly. I wonder what this, this button goes. Anytime you see a big red button, I'm not gonna push it. <laughs> I'm not going it's probably nothing more than a light bar or something but I'm still not when you got a red cap over something like that it's like don't touch it unless you know what you're doing and I don't know what I'm doing so put it in gear first make sure the brakes work yeah reverse drive yeah forward backward no issue What do you think, guys? Man, I love it. I really do. No funny noises in the engine. Does the important window... Well, we can't roll the windows down. Everything's, everything is covered in ice. We're not going to try to roll the windows down. It's a good way of breaking something. We don't want to do that. Okay. Good enough for me. It runs. Bingo. Well, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> Moving on to the next one. Next, we got a 2015 Infiniti Q50. Where are you at? There she is. It doesn't even have a lot number on it. Man, that's beautiful, guys. Like, I'm not even joking. That is a sexy car right there. Whew. As cold as it is out here, well, this car is making me hot. Uh, I'm a little curious as to how we got rocks in the exhaust. That's <laughs> slightly concerning. <laughs> okay, we got lots of a lot. I almost said lots of rice. <laughs> lots of rice. We got <laughs> lots of rocks in the exhaust. Uh, what's wrong with this car? Interesting. There's pinstriping back here and here, but no pinstriping anywhere up here. What about on the other side? Maybe this is like a rejected repair. I bet it is. See, we got the pinstriping here. So obviously the other front door and the other front fender uh, had some damage. I'll be very careful opening this. I don't want to do any damage to any of these cars. This will probably fire right up. I mean, it's pushed to start, isn't it? Incorrect. Key ID incorrect, push it. Now I learned, remember you guys told me to touch it? Look. There you go. I learned. Oh man, we got multiple touch screens. Wow. Oh dude, this is bad. This is bad. I like it. Warning, tire pressure low, add air. Oh, ladies and gentlemen flat tire visit dealer no i'm not going to the dealer for a flat tire low outside temperature yeah you don't say you don't say oh man that exhaust sounds great backup camera yeah yeah warning the door is open i know Well, I know this one's outside of our price range, but I had to show her to you anyway, guys. I'll be honest with you, that exhaust is not over the top. I really thought it would be kind of ricerish or ricery, but it's really not. The exhaust sounds really good on it, very tasteful. Let's see what we're working with under the hood here. 3.7 liter V6. Hey, this looks familiar. This looks like a Nissan 370Z under the hood, doesn't it? Just wrapped in a much bigger car body. Yeah, so I'm gonna say this fender, this door. Did the doors work properly? They do, yeah. The gaps look decent too. This had to have been a rejected repair. This is a pretty big car. The one thing I will say the gaps are a little looser on top than they are at the bottom. The hood gap right here is pretty significant. That's a that's a massive gap, and the hood is closed. 
and you can see the oh you see how the hood sticks up too far over here way too far yeah and the bumper the bumper is sticking out look at this and it's pushed in too far down here so and look at the gap on the headlight yeah when you really start looking at it you can see you can see it ain't right like look on this side everything is nice and in uniform fits perfectly headlight doesn't have any real gaps at all but you get over here man you got tons of gap in the headlight here tons of gap down here you can actually see wiring underneath that yeah that's some shoddy body work right there I'll, I'll tell you this though it's like i it's like i tell everybody man nobody's gonna know that you're driving a salvage car oh wow we got a steering wheel traction control triangle of death airbag <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, the car has obviously got a few a few issues but you're also going to be getting this car a hell of a lot cheaper than you're ever going to find it for at a dealership a dealer will buy this car let me get back in the truck <laughs> a dealer is going to buy that car and put it on their lot that's exactly what's going to happen and they're going to make a killing on it and they didn't do anything other than buy it from copart and set it at their dealership so why don't you buy the car, skip the dealer, and you can have it for yourself at a huge discount. It may not be perfect, but not everybody can afford to drive, it, to drive an Infiniti Q50. I mean, M50. Q50? It's a Q50. Anyway, moving on. It is boat time. Here we got a 1982, and the name of this boat cracks me up. It's called a Wells Cargo. I'm thinking Wells Fargo, but it's a Wells Cargo. And it's a buy it now for $1,200. And it's even currently tagged, which is just, this is crazy. I wish you could see it uh, without the cover on, but apparently they put a cover on to protect it. But there you go, man. The boat is registered for 2020. The trailer looks good. The boat looks good. Let's take a look under here and see what the hole looks like. I don't see any obvious uh, gaping holes or anything that you'll see on some of these see how the tires look tires are 20 29th week of 2013 so the tires are due to be replaced there you go man this is a nice looking boat boys what do you think I'm, I'm down to buy a boat, but I'll be honest with you, I don't know the first thing about them. So chances are I'd get myself in trouble. We go to put it in the water, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> and we sink. <laughs> I take a look at this. I mean, for 1200 bucks, you can't really beat it, right? It's got a little damage right here. Looks like it slid on something, but I don't think I don't think the damage is that bad. What do you guys think? It's damaged all the way down there. But it just looks superficial to me. I've been wanting to buy a boat. I really have. This is a it's a good size boat, man. It's a real good size boat. Good lord. This thing would be a lot of fun. I was hoping it'd give us like the length. But I don't see it. Let's see if we can get under this cover here just a little bit. It's ripped. Can you guys see anything in there? I doubt it. All right, we got another boat to look at, so let's move on to that one. Take a look at all the cool stuff Copart has, man. I'm telling you, this is a place that's got something for just about everybody. I love this lot. I do. I love being able to just drive around, man. There's our next boat right there. A Cobalt. Next, we got a 1982 Cobalt with no trailer. It does make me wonder, when you buy a boat from Copart like this with no trailer, how do you transport it? And what are these? Are these like giant styrofoam? That's styrofoam. No kidding. And it's also tagged for 2020. Maybe you're forced to, when you sell a vehicle out here, maybe you're forced to have it uh, tagged for... Uh, you know the current year 
man, this is a beautiful boat too. It really is. I'd like to see what the interior looks like, but I'm not about to, I'm not trying to climb up on none of that. You know what I mean? Got your Mercruiser. See how this prop spins freely? The other one didn't. The other prop felt like it was locked up. I don't know what that means though. Like, <laughs> I, I can figure out how to work on the engine in this thing, but, but I don't know anything about the tilt trim or whatever you call all that. What is it? What is the name of this? Susan Elizabeth. That's cute. I'll see if I can get you guys up a little bit so you can get a better idea of what this bad boy looks like. Wow, this, this, it looks like a Cadillac of boats. You know what I mean? Does it not? To me, it does. I think it looks like a Cadillac of boats. I think it's beautiful. But without a trailer, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to get too far under here. It's got some scratches and scuffs and stuff as well, which I would say is to be expected from any old boat. But I don't see anything wrong with the hull on this one either. I don't see anything that stands out and tells me, you know, this thing's going to sink if you put it in the water. Most likely you're going to have a problem with the, uh, with the engine. But, uh, I don't know. This, this wouldn't be the one for me because it's got no trailer. What I'm going to do, put a strap to it, pull it behind the truck and drag it home. Now that'd be a video though. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be a video. All right, let's go look at some semi trucks. Now take just a minute to appreciate the volume and this is such a small yard oklahoma city is a small yard guys it really is just take a minute to think with with this being one of the smallest yards in the country and the sheer volume of cars i mean it's everywhere there is just as far as you can see endless rows of cars semi trucks trailers boats jet skis it's uh it's insane it really is look a garbage truck a freaking garbage truck guys you can buy yourself a garbage truck from copart now the the two that we're here to look at i believe are going to be sitting somewhere down towards the end it took a while to figure out how this yard was structured but i think I think I'm starting to uh, figure it out now. Oh, look, there's Ricky. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start with this bad boy right here. Here we got a 1991 GMC Top Kick, whatever that means. I don't know what the hell a Top Kick is, but uh, it's got a Caterpillar diesel in it. 209,000 miles, which really shouldn't be much for a diesel. It's a pretty, pretty, pretty good sized truck right here, and it looks nice. I'm not, I don't care for the bed all that much, but it's not a bad looking truck at all. Now, if you guys watch Weston's channel, he recently bought himself a Peterbilt, and I got to thinking about it. I was like, well, man, if he's gonna buy himself a Pete, well, I ought to buy myself a, uh, I ought to buy myself a Top Kick. I hope Weston sees this video. <laughs> Weston, where are you at, man? Tell me what you think of the 91 GMC. Now, I'll be honest with you. Weston's a smart dude. You know what I mean? He knows he knows what he's talking about. He's no, he knows what he's doing, whereas I don't. So, <laughs> I would probably get myself in a lot of trouble buying something like this. Do you have to have a CDL to drive one of these? I'm, I'm, I'm asking for real because I really don't know if you got to have a CDL to drive one. SL Top Kick. You think it's got you think it's got power there's your old dot number i don't know i think it's a thing of if it uh you guys comment if i'm wrong but if it weighs less than twenty six thousand pounds i don't think you have to have a cdl to actually drive one as long as you're not driving commercially obviously if you're driving for hire you'd have to have a cdl oh let's get out of this cold for a minute Whew. okay so I wish Weston was here. He could help me understand. What is this? Is this is this what they call the Jake brake? I don't know. What is this? You just push it. It just does something. I don't know. I'm not going to mess with it. Then we got, what is this? This is uh, ch chisel? Chisel? Air conditioning? I don't know. What is this? I'm guessing this is like a two-speed or a three-speed rear differential. 
uh, PTO indicator light, which is missing indicator light. I guess it's over here. Caution, disengage before shifting. Disengage clutch before shifting. What do you think, guys? You think this thing's going to turn on? Intake heater. I think we should try to start it. What do you think? What clutch? Oh, good God. That clutch pedal weighs like a thousand pounds. Oh, my God. <laughs> what the heck? Whew. We got no heat. Hold on. The heater, it doesn't seem to work. Hot to cold, it doesn't, that doesn't do any good. So we'll turn that off. We got a radio. That doesn't seem to work either. It's listed as a run and drive. Okay, so the intake heater light went off. So I'm thinking it's okay to start, but I'll be honest with you, the way this pedal is, is bent right here, I don't know if you can see that, but the way that pedal is bent uh, it really concerns me. <laughs> it should be pretty simple. First gear, second gear. Obviously, this is neutral, so let's just... Oh, she's not happy. But she's running. She's running. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm talking about right there. Diesels don't like the cold. That's why I'm no diesel expert. I don't know anything about them, but I do know that diesels don't like uh, diesels don't like the cold. Oh, the heat's finally, uh, look, the heat's looking like it'll actually start working. Wait for this light to go off. I don't know if that's the same thing as a glow plug light or not. This thing is kind of cool, guys. I mean, I wonder what the price on something like this is. I want one. I really do. I want one. This would be fun to drive up and down the street. All right, well, I don't think she's going to run anymore. It's definitely got a starter going out on it. The starter is very weak on this one. I tried cranking it over a couple more times and all we could get is the starter was grinding so I'm not going to keep messing with it. I'm not going to cause any uh, damage to the starter. I'm sure if you got under it and tapped it with a hammer or something she'd probably kick right off again. Or maybe just leave it alone for a little bit and she'll kick right off again. Let's see if we can uh, open this hood or is it locked on the other side? I think it may still be latched over here. Yeah it is. Let's loosen that up lift her up see what she's working with there's that caterpillar right there everything under here actually looks really good doesn't it I'm telling you man this thing looks like she's in really good condition even the tires look really good look at that it makes me wonder why is it here look how easy that turbo is to get to She's sitting right, that's a tiny little turbo too. Itty bitty little turbo. It's got air conditioning. Man. Latch this down. The wind today is just ridiculous. I don't want to take any chances on a gust of wind catching this thing and flinging it up on somebody. All right, let's move on to the next one. Next on the list is a 1995 International. It says it's an 8,800. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Uh, that's a lot of uh, it's a lot of numbers. Let's see here. Steer tires look to be in really good shape. Drive tires look great too. What is this? Can somebody tell me? Is this uh? This isn't gas. I don't know what this would be. Vermeer? Is this some type of like lawn service? I don't know, man. Obviously, it's got some kind of a pump. That looks like some kind of a hopper. I don't. I probably shouldn't play with it too much because you never know. There could have been sewage or something flowing through this. Got a big old pump over here. 
I don't know what all this is here. Obviously on and off valves, but what is this thing exactly? That's what I want to know. See, for me, I have no use for any of this stuff. I'd be taking all this stuff off, making it into a flatbed with some big old ramps. You can put a car on it and drag a car right off of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's my idea. I do wonder what this thing was used for, though. I really do. And is this, what is this, a generator here? Vermeer Navigator. Does this open up or... Looks like it opens up. Oh my God, that is heavy. Holy crap. Yeah, there's your little ge uh, little diesel motor right there. A little generator. Very interesting. <laughs> that is cute. A tiny little diesel, man. It says it's a Kubota. Oh. Your turtle and your hot or high, fast and slow. You got your key over here. And it cranks. Look at that. The generator does crank. I don't see a glow plug light. Obviously, if it works, she ain't going to want to run. I would almost buy this just for the generator. You know what I mean? There we go. She's wanting to go. I want, this generator's got to be worth some money. This whole truck is only sitting at like 800 and something dollars right now. Come on, old girl. What do you think? We're going to get it running? No. I think she's uh, she's dead as a doornail. She tried, though. This is interesting, guys. I I'm really interested in getting not necessarily this, but something like it. I just don't know what I would ever do with it. This side is unlatched. What about this side? This side is unlatched, so... Oh. Have a little peek under here and see what's going on. Easy with it. A little bit of oil, nothing too serious. What do you think, guys? Take a look up inside. Wow, oh, she's rough. She's real rough. My goodness, this poor thing. Whew. What an interesting way to have a shifter. It's behind you, but it's in front of you. Huh. What do you think? You think this one will run? Well, she's dead as a doornail, too. Dang. <sighs> well, that's just been our luck lately. Let's hop down from here. We'll close this bad boy up. <sighs> and we'll make sure we latch this all back down. As I said before, I don't want to have a gust of wind come through and damaging the property or injuring somebody. Nobody wants that. All right. I think we're going to move on from the diesels, the semis. Honestly, the last thing I need is to be put behind the wheel of one of these, man. But comment below and tell me if you have to have a CDL to drive something like that or even to drive something like that as long as it's personally, like, privately owned and it's not for hire. 
because I'm really dying to know. Let's go look at some pull behind trailers. Now, if I remember correctly, this is a 2016 Prowler, and I think it's just, it's a vandalism, but it's got either a salvage or a junk title. I keep thinking this one was a junk title. As you can see, somebody obviously broke into it, completely smashed the door. We'll go in and take a take a closer look in a minute. But, uh, man, somebody didn't know what the heck they were doing. Like, they just smashed everything up. I'm guessing somebody stole this. You know what I mean? They, they literally jacked it. It's been scraped down the side. There's all kinds of stuff falling out from underneath it here. Look at that. All the uh, insulation and stuff is just falling out. Dang, thieves, man. I hate thieves. Don't you? You work hard to buy something, right? You know, you work hard to buy something like this. And somebody comes along and steals it from you. Now I know you got insurance. And insurance is great and wonderful. You know what? We're not going to go inside of this one. <laughs> I just realized it is missing one of the legs that holds it up over here. And it's got a cinder block under it. But that cinder block ain't holding anything up. Because the trailer is not even on it. So we're not going to step in. I don't want to throw the weight off on this thing at all. I will open the door. And I'll give you guys a, a peek, but we're not actually going to climb into this thing at all. There's the bed. I mean, it looks nice. It doesn't look that bad on the inside other than it's just, it's trashed. You know, it's going to be a lot of cleaning. There's bottles, razor blades, all kinds of crap in here. I just, uh, I don't think this is safe to step into since it's basically only sitting on one leg over here. And as I said, in case you didn't see it, uh, looks like they were trying to prop this side up with a brick, but that brick ain't doing anything. And I'm not climbing in it. In fact, I shouldn't even be standing beside it like that. Okay, we got one more pull behind to look at. Do you hear that turbo? Listen. Oh, <laughs> I love this truck, man. Oh, I, I think I'm going to name her Betsy. Betsy. She's a tough old girl. Let's go look at this last trailer. Yeah, and then, whew, let's get out of here. This place just has so much stuff. There it is right there, I think. A Dutch... 719 all right oh man is that a porsche boxer over there dodge challenger oh man look at that little acura i love this place dude i do all right so this is a 99 i believe dutch man okay not getting sidetracked Ooh, i don't want to step in all that Let's come over here and double check. Now, this one has both of its legs, so I feel a little more comfortable stepping into this one. And my truck could pull this if I had the fifth wheel, which I don't. It's a 99 Dutch trailer. It's a salvage title. Let's take a look around it and see why. I mean, it's a little bit older, so obviously, when you when you get into older vehicles or uh, older RVs, trailers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it doesn't take nearly as much to salvage them as when they're new, you know. So, you could end up with a scrape down the side of one of these. It's nothing more than cosmetic that completely totals it. And prime example right here. Now, I don't know if the slide has been damaged. It very well may have. But it looks like we got some damage right here that they taped back together. And we've all obviously got some damage here. You can see this is coming apart. The wood underneath is not in the best of shape. So the slide out, the pop out may or may not work. Looks like we got another, is this a pop out here too? I believe this is another pop out. It was separating right here. So this thing was already, and it's cracked all down the side right here as well this thing was already i think in pretty bad shape before it was salvaged let's have a look on the inside and see what it uh see what it looks like i feel totally comfortable going inside of this one are you kidding me 
<laughs> it's like it's stuck down here at the bottom. It's not locked. You can see it's not locked. I don't want to pull too hard though because I'm not trying to break it. Let me see if I can get my fingers down in here without this camera and uh, see if we can pull it out, take a better look inside. Well guys, we're just not, <laughs> we're not having any luck today. This door won't open. I don't know what's going on. It's, it's caught somewhere down here. I don't think it's frozen. I think it's actually jammed. You can see it's not locked because when you go to open it, it tries to open, but down here, it doesn't budge at all i've tried getting my fingers in here and it's just it's not going to happen i don't believe there's another way in i didn't see another door on this thing so yeah i guess that sucks but it is what it is i'll take one more look i'm pretty sure there was no doors or anything on the other side and there's not so hey i tried man i did my best what more can you ask of me i'm gonna get out of here you know it's one of those days where at eight o'clock in the morning it was like 38 degrees and as the day continues when it should get warmer temperatures are actually getting colder and colder and colder we're gonna get down to like 17 tonight i'm gonna bounce out of here i did my best i hope you guys enjoyed some of the new content i'm trying to mix it up and make it a little more fresh for you guys a couple semis i know they're not actually semis but a couple big trucks and i gotta give a shout out to weston man because i kind of got the idea from him i'm shameless sorry weston i saw you doing i was like man i gotta get in on this i don't know if we're gonna buy one or not but we'll definitely do uh do a better job showing you uh, more variety definitely the last video of the week which comes out on uh saturday yeah <laughs> yeah it's been a while since I've done these walk-arounds. I miss an entire week. So on Saturdays, that's when you're gonna get your mix of like boats and cars and trailers and semis. Whatever we got out here, I'll do my best to show it to you. If you enjoyed the content, give the video a big thumbs up. Don't forget, please, please, please share this video with your friends on social media. It really does, whew, catching my breath here. It really does help to support the channel. You have no idea how important that is to me and how much I appreciate all of you for making this possible. Thank you all so much for watching. Follow me on Facebook, Auto Auction Rebuilds. Follow me on Instagram, Auto Auction Rebuilds. And with that, we are out of here. Stay safe out there, everybody. I will catch you all very soon in the next one. Say goodbye to Betsy. Bye, Betsy. See them soon in the next one.